Shane here with RVs of America. We're on a pretty exciting reconnaissance right now. Michael and I with some new found friends. And we're getting, we're actually down here reconning for an upcoming Roamer adventure. And we wanted to introduce who we're down here with right now. Over here, let's start over here. I'm Don. I'm Tammy. I'm John. I'm Becky. Becky. And you guys are with with Baja Winters. Um, we're a, a tour group where we bring Americans with their RVs into Mexico. Baja Mexico! Baja Mexico. <laughs> we show them all the highlights of Mexico, beautiful beaches like this, old villages, and just a little a little taste of everything down there. Yeah, awesome. So we we do a lot of roamer adventures. If, you, if you're new to the channel, you don't know that. Um, you know, a roamer is somebody that buys a trailer or a camper from RVs of America. That's what makes you a roamer. And we do a lot of these adventures with our roamers. And typically in the past, ROA, we put on these adventures. But we wanted to team up with some people that know the land, the lay of the land, and how things work down in Mexico. So we're planning an upcoming roamer adventure. But Michael and I, we always try to come out and recon the trip before, just to make sure everything's good. Make sure it's safe or everything's for trailers because we want you to have an incredible experience. And Michael, what do you? What's your your overall feel on it right now? The bus. <laughs> the <No>. bus. <laughs> <laughs> You're all gonna have to come down here and see it for yourselves. It's amazing. It really is. It's been fantastic. We got great guides to help us, and we've gone to amazing beaches, had amazing food, and. <laughs> A little bit off-roading and lots of boondocking so it really puts all your trailers to the test yeah it's really it's really really neat now um Baja Winters has been in business how long has it been in business the company's now? been in business for about 50 years started in 1970 yeah so what's really cool is you know we didn't want to just come out here and recon it by ourselves and and you know get lost and we really wanted to team up with um Don and Becky um Don and Tammy over here and John and Becky also um, and try to you know get get guidance from you guys because you guys have been doing this and you know where to go the best places to stay there's a lot of concerns about Mexico what's certain what are some of the when I first started coming to Mexico it's like oh I got to speak Spanish to get to Mexico because I won't be able to communicate with anybody I'm going to be lost and, and once you get to Mexico if you speak a little Spanish, they speak a little English, and, and everybody makes it together. You don't have to speak Spanish, because typically there's somebody around that will help translate or speak English for you. Um, but you definitely pick up Spanish as you travel down here. Yeah, yeah but, but the neat thing about coming with a tour guide, right, or somebody that's been down here, you don't really, I mean, I haven't really had to speak any Spanish. Right. If I if I really didn't know any Spanish, I would have been fine because yeah. you guys have been yeah, kind of we get we get through all the places us. we set it all up. All you gotta do is show up and have a good time. So. Oh yeah, and it's been a good time. It's okay. it's really fun. We this is like it's a magical. I don't know. I feel it's like it's really magical. It's kind of it come down it to, Me to Baja and Mexico in general that when the first couple of days and I saw it with you guys too. You're a little apprehensive, a little a little scared, you know, not sure what's coming up. After about the, the first or second day, then you're like, oh, this is great. We're having a good time now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The one thing is, too, is the people are so warm and so friendly and so wonderful that uh, they just love to have you in their country. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It, it doesn't feel like we're at all in any way unwelcome here. No. It, it, I haven't at any point felt unsafe. Like, I felt like, I mean, now Baja, Mexico is very different from the mainland, mainland. right? Yes. yes. A lot of people kind of confuse a lot of the scary stuff that's happened in the mainland. Baja, you don't really, you know, hear much about that. Yeah, and Baja tends to be a lot more primitive, too. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not overdeveloped. I mean, Cabo, of course, has been built out. Um, but the rest of Baja is relatively untouched by the... The serious tourist industry. Yeah, everything's rusted. And it's, 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 and what, what we say too is Baja is like Alaska is to the U.S., Baja is to Mexico, the right. mainland. Yeah. They don't even consider it <laughs> a lot of times as part of Mexico because yeah, it's, like it's so rural and. The frontier. Yeah, it's the frontier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when things happen in Mexico that you hear about on the news, 
it's usually a thousand miles away. On top of that, it's across the whole ocean. Right. And uh, so they don't even know here what's going on in Mexico. Yeah. It's a, it's a complete, <clears throat> like a different country. Uh, the warmth, the safe, uh, the travel ability on the roads, it's it, it just, you wouldn't even know that you're uh, out of the United States, except the fact that the beautiful beaches, the, the beautiful country, uh, it's just a paradise town. The, the food, the food has been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I was just telling Michael, I'm like, you know, Cynthia and I go out on a, on a date and we go to a nice restaurant and it's farm to table, you know, fresh and, you know, and it's two, three times more expensive and it's actually not as good as the food down here, right? The food is, is there, there's no such thing as farm to table. Everything, everything is fresh. It comes from the farm or the sea, right? Yeah. yeah. Fresh right out. Yeah, he was uh, he was saying my lobster dinner looked pretty amazing. His I, lobster <laughs> dinner the other night. I didn't order lobster myself, but my gosh, it was bigger than any lobster tail I've seen in the United States. And it cooked Mexican style, it was fantastic. It looked oh. fantastic. Oh yeah, it was delicious. And then also, too, is the cost. We when when we come to Baja, we typically very rarely cook. We'll have a little light breakfast, a little snack during the day, or a sandwich for lunch, and then for dinner, go out for dinner every night yeah. because. It's typically cheaper to go out to a restaurant and have them prepare and serve it to you than it is to go to the store, prepare it yourself. So we're going out for dinner every night. Which makes it way more relaxing. Yeah, it's right? way more relaxing. Yeah. You get to just spend more time having fun, making friends, instead yeah, of Mexico cooking food every night. <laughs> yes, and then you get you get a good taste of the culture, you know. That's a huge part of about going somewhere is trying their foods, you know. And when you get to come down here, you get so much more variety in different foods than you do going on some other trips in the States. You get some different things, but you do not get what you're gonna get here. The cultural. Yeah, it's the cultural change, yeah. cultural food, all that, it's just amazing. Yeah, and one of the things, when we were coming down here, I've, I've been on a lot of cruises in the past, actually. Ensenada, I've been, you know, Cancun, all of the ports, I think, on that side, the, Can the Cancun area. And so I was kind of like thinking, ah, we're going to Mexico, it's gonna be, <clears throat> kind of similar, right? It's because I've been. It's nothing. It's it's nothing. There's nothing like bringing a trailer down here, and and the roads are, you know, they're skinny, they're narrow. Um, but something that I would I didn't I've never experienced was um, so here with us. This is the wagon master, and what that is. Um, you want to explain what that is? Yeah, we kind of when you have a group of people going down the road, um, because most of the highway is one lane, you can work together to get down the highway. You know, like when, when cars are trying to pass, you can use the radios to communicate front to back. Everybody has a radio in their road. Because it's a two-lane road. Right. It's a two-lane road going down. Yeah. So there's, there's one lane going one way, one going the other way, and they're skinny on both sides, so you have to be careful. And, it, you know, we can, when cars want to pass from the back of the caravan, the, 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 the boost will radio up somebody wants to get past, and we slow down and the signals, get them all passed. And the same thing when we have to go around somebody, since we're in front, we can tell you it's clear ahead to pass around the car. So it makes it, makes it passing on a, on a narrow two-lane road relatively safe, or much safer even than um, in the States, because you can see further than you can see because somebody's driving ahead on the road. Yeah, for sure. So the Wagon Master, you guys go up ahead, and then you guys are the, what do you call it again? We call it caboose, but oh, the caboose. tail gunners generally in a, in a caravan situation, we're the tail gunners. Okay, so the caboose are the tail gunners, and so so everybody else, like Michael and I and our family, we were sandwiched in between, and it kind of makes you feel all safe and warm and cuzzy, because <laughs> yeah. they got you in a little, you know, well, front and it's for, Like if somebody has a problem, like Mike's tarp was coming loose and they got to pull off the road, you know, then the wagon or the tail gunner can stick with them and, until they get up, and then, you know, they'll radio up to me and I'll slow everybody down, so when they get that fix, they can catch up there. Oh yeah, and, and I, I accidentally left my handbrake on coming out of of one of the beaches and we made a big climb and and of the smell something. yeah the tail gunners are like there's smell something and then they started radio and i see smoke 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 shane stop you know and because my tires were smoking and i lost my brakes um but it was okay but it could it could have gotten worse because those can heat up and then you can get a fire right if they weren't behind me telling me you know they you wouldn't they have see smoke i wouldn't i may have not noticed right i would have just kept on driving and it could have been a, a much worse thing so then it's just fun too, the aspect we all have radios instead of you taking this road trip and traveling just with your car, you're actually 
talking and communicating with everybody. Yeah. So it makes just the it makes the travel time go really fast, yeah. you know, when and, you spend a couple hours on the road. And it's nice too cuz Becky knows everything about Baja. So yeah. on the radio she's able to point out the unique cactuses and the, the zeros and the everything, the volcanoes and and so it's it's a learning experience too. So you don't have to wonder, "Oh, what is that funny looking thing? That's a weird tree over there." Well, after 40 years of being on that road, <laughs> you have to learn. <laughs> Yeah, so and you, Tammy's learning a lot. You yeah. guys own a house down here, right? Right. right. See, that was a shocker to me, is because when you think about Baja, or Mexico, and you wonder, like, you know, should I go down there? Is it nice? Is it safe? When that was one of the shocking things, is like we are, you know, on a, this little boat going along the coast and, or the, you know, in the ocean, and I'm like, oh, you know, whose houses are those? Oh, those are all mostly Americans and Canadians, and I was like, it seems really? like there's more people that own. Americans, there's a lot of Americans that live down here. I have yeah. own homes down here. And you wouldn't do that unless you love this place and right. felt really good about it. You know? So true. Yeah. And, and speaking of the love for the place, once people get down here, they're like, oh, I love that place. I want to live here. I'm going to keep coming back. And, and so well, it's kind of like getting over the hump. It's like you dispel all of the, the, the rumors and all of that, and you come and see it for yourself. And then at that point, it's like, oh, this is great. I'm going to keep doing this. I, I foresee many, many, many <laughs> future trips to Baja. What, what I think is great for the runners is that they're going to get a cultural experience that they would never get on a cruise ship or flying into Cabo or flying into Mazatlan. You're going to be with the people. You're going to work with the people. You're going to learn how they do things, which is a lot of times way different than we do. But it's, it's this cultural experience that a lot of times, as Americans, we really don't get you know, we can read about it, we can do all that, but to be here and live it, it's, yeah, 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 it's, and it's, it's like if, if you have a hotel room somewhere, you know, you stay in the hotel, you got nice air conditioning, television, when you're bringing your trailer down, you're living wherever you park, and so you're what? stepping out on the You're living like they live, though. So, yeah. You know, very few of them have electricity, very few of them have water. Yeah. So you're, you're living like they live in most of the little pueblos. Yeah, we we go to some nice remote ro- remote beaches. I mean, we still have our trailers, which have power and water and everything, so we're still comfortable. It's very comfortable experience, but you get to be around the locals more. Yeah. You get to see them and their and their little pueblos, but it's beautiful. And they come up and speak to you, and they want to know where you're from. And yeah. it's a lot of fun. We've gone to some awesome restaurants. Some little there's a there's Armando's, still my favorite place. It's right on the beach. <laughs> you know, you, you can sit and eat. And look at the ocean they and the food is is phenomenal i i like i love the food as you can yeah, it's tell. not it's not like you're, de- you're getting garnished five star layout you know it's like it's simple food but it's delicious fresh oh, yeah. on the beach I, I think it's just as good as any five star yeah. food i've ever had but just right on the beach it's beautiful so um a few questions for you you need a passport we're going to send out a huge invite you know emails and invite a bunch of you um, roamers and um, just get your passports ready. If you have them already, that's great. If not, maybe get, if you want to get on this trip. Um, so, and now, can you bring pets? Is that something that's doable? If yeah, a lot to of people bring their, their little dog that rides an RV or their pets. Um, dogs and cats are no problem. Um, we recommend bringing like your shot records and stuff. But yeah, that's in all of the trips that we come down here, have to be current on your on your um, vaccine. Right. Just keep that with you in case they ever ask. But we've never had anybody ask. Okay, now yeah. bring bring the vaccine. But no exotic so. pets, no, no, no birds, no lizards, no birds, birds, no birds and leave your favorite plant at home. Yeah, yes. Yes. No, no plants. My plants. You get a plant center. <laughs> They have the plant that they keep okay. in their RV. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, we went to this campground one time, and the guy pulled <laughs> out. He put, the, the picnic table was covered in all his and white trees plants. trees and flowers. And so like, it's the only way I can get her to go camp, and we take our plants with us. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't, yeah, so no, like, pets are okay, pets just are besides yeah. the lizards. Well, dogs and cats are. Dogs and yeah, cats, Dogs yeah. and cats. Bring your dogs and cats. Yeah. And yeah. vaccines. Just make sure they're, they're, they're all up, they're they're up yeah. to date. Yeah. Right. No, no special permit or or um, health certificate is required. Okay. Now, um, is it difficult to drive in Mexico with you with Michael? I was expecting it to be worse than what it was. It's still, um, 
very skinny roads, you know, so sometimes apparently I would weave off the road a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, the skinniest <laughs> part of the road on each side, it's a two-lane road, is 10 foot 6 inches, but that's only the narrowest place, and it only goes for about 20 miles. Other than that, it's wider with the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then with the whole setup that we have, you know, with the tail gunner and the and the um, wagon master and calling out cars and all that stuff, it makes it really easy to handle um, the roads. So like, but yeah, they're definitely smaller and they're definitely they have a different way of and signaling paved. and they're newly paved. yeah, a lot of them are newly yes. paved. The route that we're taking is 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 a lot nicer than it used to be. It used to be everything broke down. <laughs> yeah, dirt roads. Dirt road. it sounds like dirt, dirt roads. No, it's gotten really nice, I think, in recent years. Um, like last, last year, they actually paid both of the whole bomb up. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. Yeah, so like most of the new stuff you see, the, the last year when we came down, a lot of that was rough, and now it's just like really yeah. smooth. So, now is the best time to visit Baja. Yeah, yeah like, definitely. Like the, the, the be because once everybody hears and knows how nice the roads yeah. are, it's going to get crowded and people <laughs> are going to start coming down in droves. So we'll hopefully we'll be the first. This has been awesome. It's been not, not crazy busy anywhere. We've, we've run into um, a lot of other campers and RVers. I've seen uh, Americans like down on some of the beaches, but it's been a fantastic trip. I don't feel like the roads have been as bad. I've actually thought they've been fun, exciting to drive. Um, but it is easy with, like you said, the tail gunner. Um, the food's been excellent. The scenery, as you can see, hopefully you can see it behind us, is amazing. And it's great, you know, we, I'm parked right there on the beach. Everywhere we've gone, we park right on the beach. Oh yeah, the <coughs> only problem that I can foresee is that, um, coming down here is going to make it so you're going to have to come down here a lot more in the future so yeah. you're coming back you're going to have to start budgeting your money for annual trips for probably the rest of your life because it is very very cool down here very very fun uh, yeah you know you've got people driving up offering us live cocos yeah he's got a pina colada <laughs> he's got pina all pina and he pina. pulls we had we got it yesterday he cuts the pineapple and drills it out and blends it. Oh, it was amazing, right? You, you drink so, right out of the coconut. Yeah, right, or right out of the, the uh, pineapple. Right out of the pineapple. On the beach. On the beach. It's very, very neat. This is a very unique experience. It is. Even, even when you're on a remote beach like this, or at Santa's Pack Beach, um, you know, the vendors come by, they'll, they'll sell you shrimp, they sell you trinkets. I got a rug. Got a rug. Got some earrings for my wife. But the funny thing, this is one thing that I noticed is it wasn't, it's not like, because I've been to beaches like that, you know, in the Caribbean, right. where you go and sit on the beach and you get like bombarded. Bombarded. You get, bombarded. You get like pressure. hundreds of yeah. people coming and they won't go push away. It, and they won't <laughs> go away, right? Yeah. Like this, I, I, I've only, that's the first time I experienced it today, him coming here, right? Yeah. Like, and at Santa's, Santa's Rock, I think maybe two or three times in that day. It's it's never once felt. a day. Yeah, once they a day. Once a day and ask you, they got the firewood, they got the water from the rig, they got the fresh vegetables, they've got uh, <laughs> shrimp, uh, fresh fish. Cookies. Uh, <laughs> cookies. Yeah. Orange juice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, uh, Almost free. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and if you tell them, we've been in places where they're so high pressure, they just hound you until you buy something. If you say, no, thank you, no gracias, they... They, they, go away. Away. they seem yeah. very respectful. They, it seems completely different than like yeah. cruise ports yes. where they just feel like they're pressuring yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. really. It, it hasn't felt like that at all. Yeah. This is like yeah. country. Everybody's laid back here. Laid yeah. Back. Good country out here. So it's really beautiful, really fun. Yeah. Um, the weather in the middle of winter, we're in flip flops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're here in November <laughs> and we've been, uh, well, we've gone to the beach and swam in the ocean. And, Beautiful. It's been a little chilly at night, which I like. I like yeah. to sleep. It's a little cooler. Yeah. Sleep in that nice and cool weather. So. Yep. The fluffs in the day, light sweater at night. Yeah. I'm perfect excited. weather. Yeah, it is a perfect weather. Well, any last thoughts before we? Uh, uh, experience Baja. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I gotta say, we came down here to visit and wound up buying a company that brings people down to do tours, so if that says something about it. <laughs> we came down here to uh, visit slash uh, explore. It's a working trip. Yeah, see if we wanted to do tours down here with you guys. Yeah. Um, 
because we thought it was smart, wise to team up with somebody that knew knew everything. And um, I foresee us not doing one of these every year for as long as I can see, probably more than one time a year, it's because I think all of our roamers, all of you guys watching, everybody, I think you're all gonna want to be, you're gonna want to come on this adventure because it, it is really really fun. We're not doing any extreme off-roading with trailers like you've seen in other videos. This is more of a this relax. Is a this is the boondocking. This is the boondocking. Yeah, so we have our off-road adventure, um, adventures. This is gonna be our boondocking adventure. You know, because yeah. you will, you'll get off grid. You'll get a, you know, experience how long your solar will last, how long your water will last. Um, but one of the things that I love you mentioned is. Um, they bring your water to you on the beach. Yeah, it's sand effect. They bring the water truck. They have a pump. They pump it into your rig. That, and that was awesome, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. this can't get more relaxing. Like, we don't even have to go grab our firewood. They bring the firewood and lay it right by our fire. They bring our water and fill it up. Yeah. We get our food. You know what I mean? It's just... Walk, walk. 50 steps to the beach and there's the beach uh, restaurant to have dinner or oh. breakfast or lunch. Or, oh yeah, this yeah. is like five star RV. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's pretty awesome. So One thing John says since about the dust of Baja. One, one saying they have down here is uh, may the dust of Baja stick to your feet and keep calling you back. <laughs> yep. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for watching. We're excited to get you guys, get everyone out on an adventure down here We're in Baja. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be really it's fun. Good. Yeah, get down here. Look at this beach. <laughs> this is like this is almost December. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, December, right? Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, have a wonderful day. Yeah, see you soon. Bye. See ya. Bye bye.